A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us on Y254. My name is Patricia Moriyoki. Tonight, tonight it's going to be hot in here. How am I going to feel? I already feel <laughs> the hotness. So tonight, we're talking about male involvement in contraception. For the longest time, it has been a conversation only targeted or a conversation that we have uh, revolving around women. But tonight we just try to see how can get men get involved in family planning? Because at the end of the day, it takes two to tango. So if, if as a man you want two children, you should not leave the burden only to your partner, that they're the, one, they're the ones who are supposed to make sure that it's the two children or three or four or five. And we are just going to try and understand what is the role of men in contraception. We also try to see how can we be able, at what point do we talk, uh, do we start conversations around uh, contraception and safe sex? And at the same time, how can uh, different um, institutions looking at the religio uh, religion uh, community and also looking at the society. How can we all come together and make sure that we're having a very educative and informative conversation around contraception? Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Moriyoki and introducing the Manel. I'm calling it the Manel because we're talking about men issues. We're also talking uh, uh, to some uh, amazing men. So we are talking tonight to Peter Angure, who is the founder of Pathways Policy Institute. He also deals with a lot of reproductive health work. We also have Gideon Makumi, who is a human resource and administration manager at Bethel Network. He has also done a lot as far as reproductive health is concerned. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You've had a good Wednesday, I yeah. believe. Yes. Yeah, it has been great. <laughs> when, when you... When you hear, when I called you, okay, I know Peter has had this conversation in different platforms, and I know it's something that you found yourself engaging in um, constantly. What comes to your thought when someone gets to talk about male contraception? Uh, thanks. Uh, most of the time when people talk about male contraceptives, mm -hmm. they have this conversation in the, in the, in the female context. Mm -hmm, yes. So all the time is uh, so... Uh, yeah. As in, like, no one, no one asks you, like, you as a guy, what do you use? Yeah. You, do, you, do you take care? Have you ever thought about planning your family? Mm -hmm. Or who is in charge of planning your family? So most of the time, the first thing that comes to your head when someone tells you about contraceptives, mm -hmm. you think, so what is my woman using? Mm -hmm. I, n n it doesn't, uh, like, immediately come to your head, like, what is my responsibility or what am I using mm -hmm. to ensure that we don't get pregnant? Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time when we talk about male contraceptives, then the conversation moves beyond uh, n not the commodities that we are used to, mm -hmm. but mainly to, to condom or to male methods that mm -hmm. we'll discuss maybe in a few minutes. Uh -huh. But the first thing that comes to the head is a woman. Not, n not me, man, not yeah. me, oh. the, the, the chick. Okay. So what is she using? Is she safe or not? Mm. So what do I need to do if she's not safe, you know? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Gideon, how about you? Uh, I think uh, this whole conversation of contraceptives, mm -hmm. from for a long time, mm -hmm. predominantly it has been a conversation of the woman. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think this is because of the limited uh, available methods for men mm -hmm. because they are very few mm -hmm. uh, though I'm glad the technology is now advancing mm -hmm. but uh, men they fear the discussion of contraceptives because you hear that kama ni kwenda kutumia contraceptive mm -hmm. maybe wende ufanyie vasectomy mm -hmm. who wants that because <laughs> yeah. that's a permanent method yeah. uh, on the what? other hand okay okay uh -huh. <laughs> on the other hand yeah. we'll, well, we'll get to that we, we have the use of condoms uh -huh. and uh, with time and age, especially in a marriage mm -hmm. context, mm -hmm. uh, the use of condom in itself is controversial yeah. because it looks like uh, there's something wrong mm -hmm. or one of the partners is cheating and therefore mm -hmm. you don't want to have that conversation. Okay. So it's predominantly on the women. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who really bears mm -hmm. the responsibility of family planning. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, reproductive responsibility is not a women's issue. Mm -hmm. uh, being responsible for planning and raising a family is a universal issue that doesn't fall on gender lines. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, I know the issues with the pill research is still going on to really, uh, really see. I've seen the trials that were done and <laughs> I found something on the internet that says during the, the trials, like the few men who were picked, they experienced mood swings. <laughs> they were like, ah, uh -uh, no, we don't want that being. Yes. But women have to deal with it. Oh, yeah. Like, so would you take it? Would you 
to uh, <laughs> be willing uh, to play a part and support your partner by not only being like, okay, babe, it's okay, this is what is good for you, <laughs> but you now having to be the one on the pill. Would you I, take I, that I, I know bold <laughs> step? It's a bold <laughs> yeah, step. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good thing you've brought up about why 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 the method, the male methods have taken so long mm -hmm. to come to be mm -hmm. and uh, i know that's a myth and then the, i like discussing myths because that's one of the myths that is being brought out by mm -hmm. a lot of uh, conservatives who are against contraceptives mm -hmm. that the reason why the male co the male contraceptives are, are not out is because uh, men are afraid of the side effects that yeah. they have seen their women go through. Like mood and swing. I, yeah, like <laughs> who wants a man with a mood swing? Who, who, wants, who wants a man who has added weight or has lost weight? Mm -hmm. Who wants a man who is, you know, mm -hmm. if, uh, for instance, if, if for women you use uh, contraceptives and maybe you nyesha too much, yeah. who wants a man who has exactly the kinds, the same kind <laughs> of side effect? Mm -hmm. Like, is he spamming too much? Mm -hmm. Or what? You know, that kind, really of, that kind of a thinking. Uh -huh. But that's not the, the, the truth. Uh -huh. The truth of male contraceptives is that there has been a lot of... The, the original concept mm -hmm. of contraceptives was a women's rights issue. Mm -hmm. It was... The conversation was not about planning families, was not about uh, taking care of, uh, you, you know, a conversation in a family setup. Mm -hmm. It was... How do we empower women to mm -hmm. ensure that they get children when they want mm -hmm. and how they want mm -hmm. and the number of children they want? Mm -hmm. And it was very focused on, women. on the women. Yeah. And it, it, in the 70s and in the 80s, it became a human rights, a women rights issue. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look at the conversation we had in 2012 in uh, FP 2020 commitments mm -hmm. in London, we said, let's have an additional 120 million women mm -hmm. using contraceptives. No one said, let's have an additional... Uh, 10 million men using yeah. contraceptive. The fact that men have been left behind in the conversation. But that does not mean that there is no research. Male Contraceptive Initiative in North Carolina has done a lot of research. Mm -hmm. And they have grants all over the world around male contraceptive. And mm -hmm. we, we had condoms, which was the original thing, which mm -hmm. is a barrier method. And mm -hmm. men and women use condoms. Mm -hmm. Then we moved to, to, the, to the gel, which, mm -hmm. which now is starting to work. Mm -hmm. We had the patch, which mm -hmm. had vasectomy, which... Mm -hmm. uh, is reversible yeah. up to a certain, uh, up to five years. Mm -hmm. uh, after five years, it's really difficult to reverse. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, there was difference when it's cut, but mm -hmm. that's, that's how far we are. But now we have so many other methods that are coming up for men. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the core of male contraceptive is, are you as a guy, because I, I, I look at this conversation as not a family planning conversation, but a contraceptive conversation. Mm -hmm. A young guy in campus, mm -hmm. He's not planning a family. Yeah. So he needs to take care of himself, not mm -hmm. to get children yeah. when he's still this young. How can he do that? You know, when you have that conversation with that young man and tell him, by the way, it's not the responsibility of your woman. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell young men, if you don't want uh, to be put in this box, where you keep telling your boys, are in a trap. Yeah. You, it, there's no trapping. You yeah. trapped yourself. Go out there, take care you, of yourself. You, you trapped too. yourself because you had sex without a condom. Yeah. You trapped yourself. So it's the young man to take care of himself, use a condom. A vasectomy, of course, is not advice for guys who don't have children. Mm. I use the patch which is coming up. Use this, a, a, a new one called Typadon, mm. which is the Chinese hub, which helps you reduce your sperm count mm -hmm. so that your sperm are not active to be able to... to and you can withdraw, but it's for older men. But anyway, those are not <laughs> Okay, <ones>. okay. <laughs> okay, Gideon, would you... Peter, you didn't answer our question. Would you take it? Would you, would you be open? Y yes, any, oh. any, any, any time. Okay. Yeah. Gideon, would you be open to uh, being probably on the pill or any other method of family planning <laughs> or contraception? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a tricky uh, question to just respond to directly and say yes or no. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> I think uh, this is a kind of a talk that we need to have mm -hmm. with my wife, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, on what works. Mm -hmm. Because really, uh, like Peter has said, mm -hmm. a lot of trials are going on. I'm not sure whether I want to get involved in the trials. <laughs> <laughs> Probably when, when it's so sure I, I, now. I have a few Peters <laughs> who said they directly <laughs> they take it. Uh -huh. <laughs> then we come to it. And if female is working and we're in agreement, mm -hmm. uh, you're the one as my wife is do, doing this, <laughs> I think I'll be very supportive. And I can have that conversation of 
what works for you. But we, 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 want, we, we, are, we are fighting for this support to go beyond. <laughs> I'm supporting this. Yeah, well, uh, being that it's something that is still in its initial stages, mm -hmm. I think uh, for now, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, my answer will be no until I know about the results. <laughs> you until see, you have like a research paper. Oh, yeah, this this <laughs> says this is the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> However, if it's something that is of benefit to both of us, I think it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. But uh, let studies continue being done. Mm -hmm. We are happy to continue researching <laughs> and learning. But what about normal methods? I know. Anyway, <laughs> I, I know in uh, the few minutes that we've had this conversation, we, we're trying to talk. We, we've, we've probably one or two thrown uh, a point how we can be able to take this uh, burden off uh, uh, from women. Because mm -hmm. for the longest time, yeah. women have carried the burden oh, off. Yeah. Oh being or like on the or like being the past people who are making sure that if you sit down as a couple and you're like okay i think we want to have a ch uh, to have children in three years it's mm. the woman who goes out to try and see how is it that i'm not i cannot get pregnant so now how do we involve men because tonight we're trying to see how do we involve men in that mm. how do we convince them that these these support you can give more than just saying okay babe uli and there sindano mm. Because I, I, I really would okay. like us to get to that mm. point, Gideon. Uh, but I think uh, how, how, how I see it, and I'm happy because nowadays it's something that is common mm -hmm. uh, in a marriage setup. And allow me to speak uh, within that uh, limit because I'm in it already. Mm -hmm. uh, I realize that uh, right now it's very, very important, mm -hmm. even uh, for instance, when uh, your wife is expectant, mm -hmm. to go with them even for the clinics mm -hmm. because there's a lot of information that is given to them. Mm -hmm. And for us men, we end up missing it out mm -hmm. because we think uh, the responsibility of a child mm -hmm. is uh, solely on the woman. Mm -hmm. Mine is to provide. Mm -hmm. After that, whatever happens to the baby, mm -hmm. it is her responsibility. Mm -hmm. But now at the time of birth, mm -hmm. and I'm speaking from experience, I realize depending on which hospital you go to, uh, they are able to sit you down and tell you now the baby is here, mm -hmm. um, this is what will be happening, these are some of the changes to expect, mm -hmm. probably you don't even need to engage sexually mm -hmm. for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Because you see, if you're not there, for instance, when that conversation, that advice yeah. is being given, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for us men, we know naturally we are ready for sex anytime. Mm -hmm. You can imagine it's a day two after they've come from the hospital mm -hmm. and you're going and, hey, and you babe, have your expectations. how about, yeah. yeah. So uh, I realized that they are now able to advise. Mm -hmm. uh, the doctors there, they'll tell you that uh, we have this method, we have mm -hmm. this other one, we have this other one. And they even give you time to go and discuss mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. and come back to them and tell them which one works for you. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, then after and you've agreed, you are now able, th th they are able to advise further mm -hmm. because they even tell you the, the side effects of each one of them, mm -hmm. the ones that are hormonal, the ones that are non-hormonal. Mm -hmm. So I think the first support uh, in the time and age we are in, before we get to that time when now the pill for the men has been proven to work, mm -hmm. I think I'm happy men would join their, <laughs> their wives, mm -hmm. their partners, mm -hmm. for those clinics and even those uh, gynecological visits okay. because they help. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, I like that Gideon has talked about a man getting involved, but now not like as me, the man making the decision. Because mm -hmm. as I was doing research for this, I saw someone say that uh, most of the times, even when a woman is going in to get, whether it's the uh, ejection, the implant, or whatever a method of uh, family planning that they're using, the people at the facility will be like, Wengo Japale. And the person being told Wengo Japale is the man. Mm. So from that moment, we've already started secluding the men, mm. trying to show them that this is a woman's issue. It's like you're not supposed to be involved as a man. The same thing with clinics, the way Gideon has talked about it. How we don't, you, you go to the clinic, there's a queue, maybe you'll be told, Wewe, Goja Pele Kando. So how now do we also send the message to different facilities, to different uh, health uh, practitioners to understand that when you're giving this talk about contraceptive to the women, please also try find a way now you can involve the men, Peter. <laughs> that's, an, uh, that's a dual question and mm -hmm. it's interesting because mm -hmm. originally we were saying women go to seek family planning mm -hmm. when they're hiding from their husbands mm -hmm. because their husbands don't support family planning. Yeah, there are some who don't. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so for, a, for a long time, women have been... The reason why men used to be told, where Goja Pale, watcha mm -hmm. ingia, is because uh, the, the doctors or the nurses think that the husband 
Maybe mm -hmm. again, it's family planning. And, mm -hmm. and most women actually would come and leave their cards mm -hmm. in the facility and say, injection, three months, mm -hmm. I don't want to carry my injection cards. The mm -hmm. next date, we will fill it up. Mm -hmm. So that, that has been the, the tradition. And that has been the reason why men have been sort of Side excluded. Mm -hmm. But increasingly, when we started talking about male, male uh, involvement, mm -hmm. And the first one was on the clinics. Mm -hmm. And we, in this country, we passed a, a quasi policy because it's not a government direct policy that if a man comes to the clinic with his wife, mm -hmm. if a man escorts his wife to the clinic, they don't queue. Mm -hmm. So this was an incentive mm -hmm. because most men were saying, oh, women go to the clinic and take the whole day. Mm -hmm. So I told her, bring her and she'll not take the whole day. She'll mm -hmm. take 30 minutes, and you'll, you'll be done home. and you'll uh -huh. go home. So uh -huh. it was the first incentive to getting men to the facility because men don't go to hospitals. Mm -hmm. So that was the first the, the, the first initial thing to bring in men. Mm -hmm. But then increasingly now men are being involved at the birth because uh, most of these family planning methods are postpartum mm -hmm. immediately after you have given birth. Mm -hmm. So what's the conversation? So you are there and you are sort of educated mm -hmm. on, on what does your woman require mm -hmm. for you to ensure that uh, she does not get pregnant until she's done with exclusive breastfeeding, mm -hmm. until she's done with the three years of the two years of breastfeeding, and mm -hmm. then an extra year of recovery. Mm -hmm. So that after three years, then you can now be ready for it. But a lot of men, of course, have a lot of needs about family planning, and they need to get to the facility for them to learn because they will not understand their wives when 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 their wives tell them, uh, you ask. For mm -hmm. two weeks, for two weeks continuously, mm -hmm. and that guy will not understand. Yeah. So until he's told, maybe your woman was given a method, a hormonal method that mm -hmm. did not work well for her. She needs to change her method. Mm -hmm. He'll start feeling. But all those who lose libido, and and the guy is like, now does he don't like me anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so, so so this, in fact, if there is someone who should be involved more in the contraceptive conversation, it's, it's the, the guy. Yeah. Because he's in charge of his family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that's for a family man. For a young man, Gideon has not has tasted he's a family man. May I talk for the young men in yeah. Kampu uh -huh. and who are not ready to get married. Mm -hmm. But they're just out there. So mm -hmm. they that guy will not come to the clinic with a girl. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he's not his interest is mm -hmm. not that he's mm -hmm. just having fun yeah so he also needs avenues in which he needs to learn about contraceptive what works for him as mm -hmm. a person and 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 so that he starts seeing you know we tell girls when they get into campus use this method it's jadel it's five years mm -hmm. so you'll be done with your campus life and you'll have one year of getting a job what do we tell a guy because he has not he has no method that mm -hmm. can last him five years mm -hmm. so that he's done with campus so we need to really encourage uh, facilities policy makers to, to have a different approach okay. to involving men and young men. Okay. Yeah. So according to some uh, statistics, among the 1.9 billion women of reproductive age group, that is of 15 to 49 years, worldwide in 2019, 1.1 billion have a need for family planning. Of these, 842 million are using contraceptive methods and 270 million have an unmet need for contraception. This now brings me to the question. Have we invested enough? Do you feel we've invested enough as a country as far as family planning uh, is concerned? Do we, have we gone into getting, uh, probably making sure that we have good research? Because you hear people talking about the long-term uh, effects of uh, the contraceptives. You hear some, contra uh, you can be on a contraceptive and you still get pregnant. So have we invested enough, Gideon, as a country in, contra in family planning? I'll say that uh, we're somewhere mm -hmm. compared to a few years ago, mm -hmm. the 80s, the 70s. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are where we are. I think we are around 56 uh, mm. yeah, percent, yeah, uh, yeah. penetration of the family uh, planning. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at what is happening, and especially in the health uh, centers, mm -hmm. you'd appreciate that something is being done about it. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, I'll say we are not yet there. Mm -hmm. But the journey where we are so far, it's promising. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot more is still happening. Mm -hmm. Even at a personal level nowadays, uh, contraception is available. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just walk into a hospital as a mm -hmm. woman and say, for me, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I want a Jadel insertion. Mm -hmm. I want a coil. Mm -hmm. And it should be available mm -hmm. at a very affordable uh, cost. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is really promising as far as the future of uh, hitting the target mm -hmm. of about 80% uh, use of that is uh, mm -hmm. 
yeah. concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, so I must admit that a lot has been done mm -hmm. uh, and still work in progress, but we are good. Above 50% is somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, Peter, being because uh, I believe under Pathways, you are able to do a lot of research around contraceptive. You get to talk to a lot of people about it. What, how would you say we're doing as a country? Mm, as, as Guido mentioned, we are doing we are we, we are doing okay. Mm -hmm. we, can, mm -hmm. <laughs> we can we are doing say okay, we are okay because what we need to reduce. I am glad you brought out that statistics. Mm -hmm. What we need to reduce is the unmet need for family yeah. planning. Mm -hmm. Unmet need for family planning means women who want mm -hmm. to use family planning but cannot get it mm -hmm. because either they can't access it, they mm -hmm. can't afford it, they okay. don't have the right choices. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's not equitable, so they are not. They can't find it in the places where they would want to get. Because we, countries like Nigeria are at 36%. Mm -hmm. But you look at their unmet need for family planning, which is at 20%. Mm -hmm. Looking at ours, we are at 38% unmet need, meaning mm -hmm. Nigeria is actually doing better than us. Because yeah. Yeah. people don't need to take up contraceptives. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, uh, we should not look to aim at 80-90%. Mm -hmm. Because the aim is not to have every woman mm -hmm. using contraceptives. Mm -hmm. The aim is to ensure that when a woman wants to have contraceptives, yeah. they yeah, can yeah, have yeah. it. Uh -huh. And our biggest challenge as a country has been fact, first uh, domestic investment mm -hmm. into family planning. Our commodities have been donor driven mm -hmm. 100%. We've been mm -hmm. having DFID, UNFPA, USAID, KFW mm -hmm. giving us commodities of about our our budget for contraceptives uh, in 2018 2019 was about 2.1 billion mm -hmm. shillings and Kenyan invested only 800 million donors invested more than a billion mm -hmm. in our and as we move towards the journey for self reliance around contraceptives if Kenya does not invest in commodities in mm -hmm. buying family plan and they are not cheap that's why you hear Two billion, three billion. Yeah. If we don't invest in that, then we will continue having a bigger and met need for family planning. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the costed implementation plan. Now we are launching the third one, mm -hmm. the family planning costed implementation plan. It is says between 2022 and 2025, we need about nine billion shillings to invest in family planning. Mm -hmm. If we are to reduce our unmet need for family planning up to close to zero, mm -hmm. but uh, if you look at how much, and then the other challenge is that health is devolved. Mm -hmm. So counties are yeah. the ones, as much as the national government will work around a CIP and buy commodities, this work is being done at the counties. If mm -hmm. counties have no costed implementation plans, if counties are not accountable to how much they invest in mm -hmm. budgets for health, then we'll just be having the same conversation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's, a, it's quite expensive, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, it's expensive for women, ordinarily a woman leaving her house to go and buy a coil okay. or mm -hmm. a pill mm -hmm. or yeah okay uh when, when we talk about um safe what is it probably the best time to start talking about uh safe sex to start talking about safe con uh, contraception what do you think is the best time for people to start embracing that conversation Gideon, around our um, communities talking to young girls talking to young men because i know there are limitations some of which i feel we can surpass but what you think is the best way um Patricia, this is a question that has different dimensions. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're looking at the religious mm -hmm. uh, limitations, yeah. they talk about when you're married. Mm -hmm. However, the reality of the matter is our girls and our boys are getting involved in, in sex yeah. at a very early age, mm -hmm. including in primary school. Yeah. So I think uh, that empowerment should start as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. As soon as you, you think, uh, say, as a parent, or as a community that they, the, your girls and your boys are growing mm -hmm. and they're able to understand the risks mm -hmm. and the dangers involved in sex, mm -hmm. I think that is the right time to start. Okay. I wouldn't say it is 10 years, it is 15 years, mm -hmm. because the exposure comes at different yeah. times. Mm -hmm. And the sooner the, these boys and girls get the information mm -hmm. about the risks of it, the pregnancy, the STIs, mm -hmm. blah, 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 the better for us as a community mm -hmm. because if we remain silent for a long time mm -hmm. and assume that it is a taboo mm -hmm. to talk about sex mm -hmm. that assume and assume that it is ungodly mm -hmm. to tell to tell your daughter or your son sit down let's talk about sex mm -hmm. then uh, you'll only have yourself to blame mm -hmm. when they indulge in it okay. because they would rather ra uh, sorry they would rather learn mm -hmm. from us as the adults mm -hmm. than they learn from their friends yeah. peers who are as much 
uninformed mm -hmm. as they are. Okay. So the sooner we do this, mm -hmm. the better. Okay. Yes. Uh, Peter Gideon has talked about, um, we know that uh, contraception, conversations around uh, safe sex and all that is something that the religious community has really come out so strong ab uh, against. How do we try to also bring them on board because i believe for us to be to get to a point where these things are normalized we need every institution involved how do we get the religious community to understand that we are not telling these uh, young people we're not educating them about sex or informing them about sex with an intention of promoting immorality mm. but rather at least being aware you're able to make a better choice yeah we, we always tell people mm -hmm. the religious institutions or even political leaders or even mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. that the earlier mm -hmm. you speak to your child about sex, mm -hmm. the more they delay their sexual debut. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have uh, research has showed mm -hmm. that uninformed kids mm -hmm. start getting curious about sex at 9, 10, 11, and they do have sex at 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Informed children mm -hmm. delay their sexual debut mm -hmm. to 15, 16. Okay. And, and, and so this is proven that the more you talk to them about sexuality, mm -hmm. because w when you talk about, you know, a lot of people say when you say about comprehensive sexuality education, mm -hmm. we, are having a, we are saying let's teach our kids how to have sex. Yeah. We are talking about age-appropriate sexuality education. Mm -hmm. When a kid is five years, mm -hmm. you're telling them, what is this thing you have between your oh, legs? Okay. Clearly, mm -hmm. who should touch it, who should not touch it? All right. When should it, who, who should consent? Mm -hmm. And you see that conversation about consent starts early. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can have this conversation as early as five years, mm -hmm. it's, it's better for them. So we tell religious leaders, and we have religious groups. Mm -hmm. I, I always laugh about marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. Because when people are doing marriage counseling, they're told all these conversations. Yeah. But these same pastors tell you, they can't tell you earlier. Yeah. They should actually start telling them earlier and tell them, just hold on. Mm -hmm. If you can't wait, then let's get you married and let's give you this method. Oh. So religious leaders have a big role to play around. Okay. Uh, 30 seconds each because we are actually out of, uh, we've run out of time. 30 seconds each, your parting shot around this uh, conversation, starting with your Gideon. Uh, the whole conversation about family planning, mm -hmm. contraception method, mm -hmm. I think uh, in a marriage setup, I think it's a conversation between a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. Let it not be a burden of the wife. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, yeah. That should be a conversation that both of us know. Mm -hmm. That I'm kosef, I'm yeah. kosef. All right, <laughs> married mm -hmm. people, you're so well represented. Peter. Men, mm -hmm. take charge of your relationships. Mm -hmm. You are the guys leading these families you are the heads of these families you are the heads of your relationships don't come to us telling us i was trapped mm -hmm. take control of your contraceptive needs okay thank you very much guys i feel conversations around uh, family planning contraceptive sex save uh, safe sex education are an ending we can sit here and talk the entire night we can have another show and, and still talk and not exhaust but uh, for people who are watching us i hope that you've learned one or two Take it upon yourself to really understand what contraception uh, is all about, what family plan is all, all about. If you're not in a family setup, please, if you're not ready to be a father, if you're not ready to be a mother, figure out ways that are going to work for you or how you can protect yourself. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Marioki. Do have yourselves a very good night. Good stuff. <laughs>